What's going on guys, Jamie here, back again with another episode and I thought I would start today a little bit differently. I know I said I wanted to show you the important moments in the closing stages of the season and as you can see we're coming off the back of an emphatic 5-2 win against Birmingham and as you will be able to see that has secured our playoff spot for, the ga for this coming end to the season. If we have a quick look how we got there since we were last together. I won the win away at Reading, a tough game, first against third again and... Uh, we got the all-important win in a tough game. We then went 2-0 winners against Fulham. We did go down to 10 men in this game. But Matt Ritchie with two absolutely cracking free kicks. I did try and load the highlights for these. I did want to show you, but for whatever reason, my laptop isn't deciding to play ball. The first free kick was pretty special. We went down to 10 men. We were under the cosh for a lot of the second half. But in the 89th minute, if you thought the first free kick was good, the second one was even better the 89th minute to give us the all important three points and then as I said a really really impressive 5-2 victory it was touch and go for a little while I had to make a couple of changes in this game noticeably sells in goal who did have a good game well ratings say he had a good game but it was as dodgy as ever Gamez also came in and did alright but uh, yeah 5-2 and yeah here we are with our playoff place guaranteed I have made quite a few, um, a bit of rotation, a bit, I've made quite a few changes, that's what I was going to say. Um, if you have a look in this lineup, I played the army in this game, um, he wanted a bit more first team football, didn't really deliver. In the Fulham game, again, a few more changes, brought Hanley, Lazar and Gale into the side. Lazar ending up getting sent off on his chance to impress, Gale with a 6.4. And then in the Birmingham game, yeah, as I said, Sells and Gamers coming in. And uh, Gale starting the game as well, getting a 7.1, played quite well in this game, I think he got an assist. But the game I wanted to show you was the Wigan game. That is the next game, it's a couple of weeks because there is an international break. But yeah, after this I will meet you on match day. Just another piece of news guys before we hit that Wigan game. As you can see on the screen, the Newcastle board have offered me a new contract and I have accepted it. Uh, our success in the league obviously prompting the board to offer me that new contract as you always start or seemingly always start just on a one year deal but the success of the team has led to the board as I said offering me an extension so a two year extension has been signed so that's good news and means the series can carry on anyway let's get to that game so here we are then game day and uh, as I said a home game against Wigan to start off April we had a clean sweep in the awards for the division this month. I won manager of the month with a draw against Huddersfield sorry, and the three wins that we had following that. Matt Ritchie got player of the month and also got goal of the month and he's in fine form. But if you have a look at the last five games, Christian Atsu is the man on an eight rating. We've just been unstoppable in this run of form recently. Anyway, let's have a look at today's team. A fairly familiar lineup. Carl Darlow in goal, back four, Yedlin, Lascelles, and Bember and Dummett. Across the midfield, we've got Richie, Shelby, Colback, and Atsu. And the top two of Mitrovic and Dwight Gale. I really want Dwight Gale to do well. I'm trying to give him as many chances as possible. As you saw in the last game, I think he had a fairly good game for the first time in God knows how long. Managed to get an assist. So hopefully today, against the likes of Wigan, uh, hopefully he can notch a goal. First highlight of the game then, half an hour in, and it's Wigan with it. There's Jacobs with the ball, but Atsu can come away with it. He drives down the left, he's taken on his man, Christian Atsu. Can he get a ball in? He can, away, only as far as Shelby. What can he do with it? He's picked it up, 25 yards, shoots, and it's well wide. A pretty quiet game, if you look at the stats, eight shots to us now, well, ten shots as we come up to half time. But no highlights, only three shots on target. Wigan with one shot. And that's it, a boring first half. We did this against Wigan last time. We um, you know, we were favourites going into the game. And, and Bemba's not happy after that. Well, we're drawing against 21st place Wigan. But yeah, as I was saying, um, we'd gone into this game last time, the reverse fixture. Wigan were like bottom of the table or something like that. We were on a good run of form. We went to the DW and got, and we got beat. Let's see if I can turn Mbemba around. Nope. Well, at least some of them look happy. Happy, sorry. But yeah, Wigan. Hopefully not a bogey team. Um, 
of all teams to have. I mean, if it would make sense if it was one of the top teams, but a team that's been struggling all season. But I suppose if they are struggling, these are the kind of games they need to pick up points if they can. But I've made a change. I was bigging him up pre-game after the month he's had, but the typical player in the month curse has struck. Matt Ritchie's coming off and Jamie Patterson's coming on. I think this is the first time that Patterson's played in the right wing position that I actually signed him for. So uh, that's always good. As there is a highlight and it looks to go to Wigan. So hopefully this won't come to much. Oh, member with a risky header back to Darlow. Actually, one thing I didn't mention pre-game, uh, Jesus Gamez. I've had enough of his whinging and moaning, so I've transfer listed him, and uh, he's actually gone out on loan to Rosenborg of Norway to the end of their season, which runs up till New Year, so I won't be able to sell him until January, but at least he's out of the squad now. As Atsu has a chance and fires wide, a really dull game. We're going to still only have him one shot. Oh, we've had 14 now, but only four on target. I'm going to make another change, I feel. I think I'm going to take one of the strikers off. I'm going to take Gale off. I'm going to bring on that man, Shembury. Swap Shembury and Mitrovic around. Right, one last chance, maybe. Yeah, then Shembury whips the ball in and Mitrovic. Oh, it's a penalty. I don't really know what happened there. Apparently a shove on Mitrovic. Oh, and this could be a stroke of fortune that we desperately need. Shelby in the 90th minute with a penalty. And typical. That's a good save from the penalty, but of the way the game's gone, I'm not surprised at all they didn't go in. That would have been very typical of us, though, to snatch a game late on. But the highlight continues. Mitrovic into Shembury. Oh, it's a t tame shot. Straight in the keeper. The highlight's still continuing on. I really hope this doesn't lead into a goal as Lascelles gets away. As far as Patterson, now Shelby, what can he do with it? He finds Shembury. Shembury, not a lot of space to run into and gets dispossessed. We're gonna, we've got less than a minute to go now. Is there going to be one final chance for either team? As Nego, Nego plays inside. Morsey now, Colclough. Omar Bogle, oh, that's well collected by Carl Darlow. Looks like time's going to run out then. A poor draw. 20 shots in the game. 8 on target. Wigan 4 shots. Unless there is to be one last hurrah. But no. Shembury is tackled. Actually as I recalled this. Uh, England played Malta yesterday. And I was around a mate's house watching it. There was a few of us there. And I was. Uh, Shembury actually played. And I was uh, cheering on Shembury. And no one had any idea why I knew him. And why he was. Uh, why I was cheering him on. But. You guys will know, although he didn't really have much impact in the game as England won. Convincingly but unconvincingly 4-0. I thought it was interesting. Three goals in the last however many minutes. I think from 86 minutes onwards we scored three. But a poor draw here. And I certainly say, yeah, that wasn't good enough. I think what we're going to do, actually, there's a game against Burton. Uh, I think Burton are struggling, yeah, down in 21st. So that game was pretty poor. So I think what we'll do, actually, is we'll show the Burton game as well because I don't want to have an episode where not a lot has happened and the game that I show you was pretty poor. So I will join you at the Burton game. Right, here we are then, second game of the episode. A few days have passed and it's another home game, this time against Burton Albion, who are also struggling, as we saw in the last clip. Uh, there was something in the press conference that popped up, actually, um, if results went our way, we could have actually got promoted in this game. I had a quick look, um, and as you can see, if we go on the championship. So we're 13 points clear at the moment. Beforehand, we were 17 points clear, I think. 17? Yeah, 17. Oh, no, 16, 17, I can't remember. Anyway, Reading was second, uh, Huddersfield was third. And what it was, if we beat Burton... Um, we needed Huddersfield to lose and Wolves to draw at a maximum um, for us to get promoted. So quite a, a few results needed to go our way. Um, and as you can see, we play, there was a full fixture list yesterday. We play on the Wednesday. As you can see, the first result that popped up on the little, when the simulation carries on is that Forest beat Wolves 3-0. So that was one job done, and then Huddersfield were at home to Norwich, and I did fancy Norwich to get a result away at Huddersfield, but unfortunately Huddersfield um, got the win. So 
We won't be able to get promoted today. Um, we'll be 16 points clear with six games to go, so not quite enough points to get the job done today. But even so, getting promoted early April is no mean feat. So hopefully in our next game that will come. Um, if it does, if there is a chance, I'll probably record that one. So I want to capture the game that gets us up because it's, it's seemingly inevitable now. But we can't... Uh, 21... We could still break Reading's record, 106. We was, I think, 20, 21 points is left on offer. So we can still get 108 points, although that would be a monumental season and one that I didn't expect. Anyway, today's team. I think we're unchanged. Oh, no, no, we are unchanged from the Wigan game. It wasn't a great performance, but I have faith in the boys. These are the boys that have done it all season by and large, so... Hopefully, we can get the job to done today and it's not another bore draw. One thing I actually wanted to mention as this game kicks off, um, is some people have said to me before, why do you always play on standard even when you're at home? Why don't you go attacking? And I just feel like, I feel most comfortable playing standard. I feel like um, with standard, oh, great goal from Jack Colbeck as I'm talking there. Um, but I feel, with, I feel with standard that, you know, it's you can play really well as you've seen. You know, I've played, I've started standard like every game this season, and you've seen some of the results we've had. Some games we've absolutely tonked teams, and I just feel like it sets itself up quite well because you don't set yourself up so that you're too negative and you invite teams onto you, but also you don't just set yourself up to attacking that you can leave yourself exposed. It's just quite a nice. I mean, that's why it's the, the neutral sort of mentality, if you like, because you can, it can go either way. And also, I'm quite, I like to be as proactive as possible, but I also find that being reactive in this game is also quite good, as Richie puts his tunic love with a great finish. But yeah, I find that um, if you start the game in standard, and then you can always just change it according to how the game's going, like now, Okay, yeah, we are playing Burton, and you know they're not they're not having the greatest of seasons, but I can leave it in standard now, and I can feel comfortable going forward that we are going to see out this game quite comfortably. Whereas you know if if they were really coming on to us, and I felt that we were you know we were um, exposed at times, I could always just drop it back into counter, and you know, or if I felt like we were on top of the game, but we just weren't taking a, uh, taking our chances, then. I could up it into attacking and we could go for it even more. So I think, yeah, I always I always like to play standard. I play flexible as well. It just It's the same sort of reason, really. I just like to sort of start as neutral as possible, see how the game goes, and then change according to that. I'm going to let... Uh, I'm just looking at the advice from Ramis there. He doesn't want to say anything, so I'm going to let him take the team talk. Got nothing specific to say. Okay. I've never really done that before, actually. I've never not said something to the players, so we'll see how that goes. But, but yeah, as I was saying, quite reactive, really. So it's worked, it's served us well so far. So, you know, why if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So. Not a lot happening in the second half. Quarter of an hour to go, and there's another highlight to us. As Gail gets the ball into the cells, he'll find Richie. Cuts inside, it's a good tackle from Dyer into Mitrovic. He gets the ball, and he finds the net. A good goal from Mitrovic, his 15th goal of the season, probably should take him off soon, he has got a knock, I think it's a bruised shin, so actually I think if it was a hammy or you know a different kind of injury, I'd be more inclined to take him off, but we are, well I say that, it is 3-0, we are comfortable, so I think I'm going to make some changes, I will bring off Mitrovic, and let's just bring off the tired players really, we can bring off Lascelles, he's had a good game, we'll save his legs. And I think we can bring off Shelby as well because he is vital to us at the moment. So don't want to push it too much. Anyway, we'll bring on Murphy for Mitrovic. We can bring on Clark for the sales and we'll swap Clark and Bemba. And then we can bring on Patterson and uh, play him in his preferred central midfield role. When I was on the squad screen earlier, I actually noticed about Patterson. His average rating is uh, actually quite well quite well his average rating has actually been quite good considering he's only coming off the bench he's putting in the performances when he comes on so i'm actually quite impressed with him even though he's been playing out of position 
Can we get a fourth then? Gale, can he get a goal? He can! Finally, Dwight Gale has scored only a seventh goal of the season. But a rarity, really, for a striker like him, which is uh, it's just not good. But anyway, it's a good control. Gets the space, fires it into the top corner. A lovely goal. And this is the kind of game that I wanted against Wigan. Absolutely dominating the game. More shots, plenty of shots on target. Burton have just had their first shot on target and it's just about to finish. Plenty of possession. And there we go. 4-0 against Burton. A 16 point gap now. At the top with 6 games to go. A very nice victory boys. So yeah we can see. Still only 2 losses in our 40 games this season. So there's 18 points left to play. We're 16. Yeah 16. So if Huddersfield... Well, it's not just down to Huddersfield, because Reading are there as well. So, we'll see how it goes. I think I will live com the next match, because from this point on, anything can happen. So, if we just have a quick look at who our next match, where well, we saw it there. Mitrovic had to four to five days. Oh, that's annoying. I should have taken him off sooner. So, if we have a look at the schedule, we've got Sheffield Wednesday next away. Fairly tough game. Well, on paper they're tough games, but I don't know how each of the teams are getting on. Wednesday, average season. Leeds struggling. Ipswich doing okay. Preston struggling. Cardiff not the best. Barnsley struggling. So, not a too bad a run in, but I think we can tell, you know, it's a matter of when now um, that we get promoted and indeed get the title. So, I think once we clinch it, we'll do a bit of rotation and just give those those players that aren't playing so much we'll uh, give them a bit of game time I'm not fussed about trying to get you know as, as many points as possible the, the goal for the start of the season always was to get back as soon as possible and ideally win the league and we're going to do that so I don't mind that too much so anyway I think we will end the episode there a double header today slightly different but I hope you enjoyed it I couldn't just leave you on the Wigan game that was an absolute sham but anyway, if you have enjoyed today's episode, please pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you for watching.